Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Entelodonts were a family of formidable artiodactyls that were native to North America and Eurasia. Originating in the Middle Eocene roughly 40 million years ago, these animals possessed a vaguely pig-like appearance, with massive skulls, bulky bodies and relatively elongated limbs. The most basal forms were relatively tiny, being comparable to small wild hogs in terms of size, though later forms were often massive beasts that stood up to 6 foot 9 inches tall at the shoulder. Entelodont teeth were relatively unspecialised, lacking the diastema and reduced canines of some more herbivorous ungulates. The premolars were pointed, while the molars were flat and bunodont in shape, suggesting very broad omnivorous habits. In fact, wear patterns preserved on the molars were similar to those of carnivorans, indicating that meat formed a component of entelodont diets. These features, when combined with the massive and powerful construction of the skull, enabled these animals to process very tough foodstuffs, including roots, tubers and bones. The jaws were capable of opening at up to 150 degrees, with preserved facial wounds revealing aggressive interactions with their own kind. Indeed, this anatomical trait reveals something about the phylogenetic placement of entelodonts. When first scientifically described in the 19th century, these animals were considered to have been close relative to modern pigs, given their superficially similar appearance and tooth structure. This led to the group receiving the nickname of the Hell Pigs or Terminator Pigs. However, more recent studies have demonstrated that entelodonts were basal members of the clade Whippermorpha, with their closest living relatives being hippos and cetaceans. Similarities to these groups are most clearly evident in the structure of entelodont skulls and jaws. Among the largest of the early artiodactyls, these animals were successful aggressive omnivores that thrived alongside the more exclusively carnivorous amphicyonids, nimravids and hyenodonts. The infamous yet poorly understood genus Androsarcus has in recent years been considered a close relative of entelodonts. Known from very partial remains consisting of a single skull recovered from Middle Eocene deposits in Inner Mongolia, the animal was initially believed to have been an enormous mesonychid, and appeared in this form in the second episode of Walking with Beasts. If Androsarcus was a true member of Whippermorpha, as seems likely, its size has been estimated to have been similar to that of an American bison, at up to potentially a ton in weight. Like the Entelodonts, it was probably an omnivore in life. The oldest and most basal true entelodonts have a purely Asian distribution, suggesting that the family originated here. If they truly were stem whippermorphs, then the group must have diverged during the early Eocene, leaving a gap of 10 million years or so in the fossil record. The most ancient entelodont was also the smallest. Named Proentelodon minutus, this animal dwelt in the middle Eocene of Mongolia and was tiny by the standards of the group being no bigger than a house cat. The genus is only known from dental fossils, which suggests that Proentelodon had an omnivorous diet and possibly was quite similar to the modern Indian pygmy hog in terms of lifestyle. A close relative, Eoentelodon, has been described from mid to late Eocene deposits in China and was larger, being comparable to a modern collared peccary. Both of these early forms inhabited humid tropical forests and fed on a mixture of fruit, plant matter, small animals and carrion. During the late Eocene, Entelodont spread into North America for the first time, with the genus Brachyhyops present in both China, Canada and the US. Another American genus that was present in the late Eocene to late Oligocene was Archaeotherium, a highly successful animal that also inhabited Eurasia as well. Standing about 1.2 metres, or 3 feet 11 inches tall at the shoulder, and weighing at least 150 kilograms, or 330 pounds, this animal was comparable to a wild boar in terms of size. The skull was proportionally large and was equipped with powerful jaws, wide cheekbones, and facial knobs similar to those of a warthog. In life, Archaeotherium would have resembled a long-legged wild pig that lacked the distinctive upturned snout of modern sewards. It lived in semi-arid, forested and riverbank environments before the evolution of true grasslands. Like all entelodonts, the genus had typical artiodactyl limbs, but lacked specialisations for fast running. Though it supported its weight on cloven hooves, the foot bones remained unfused, and the toes could spread as modern camelid feet do. This structure, unique to entelodonts, 
may have helped the living animal move on soft ground more effectively. The high spines on the vertebrae above the shoulder supported strong neck muscles and tendons to handle the weight of the heavy head. The brain was tiny, but had relatively large olfactory lobes, suggesting that the animal had a keen sense of smell. Facial scarring suggests that Archaeotherium often engaged in territorial disputes, with the animals opening their mouths in order to inflict non-lethal bites on the opponent, behaviour reminiscent of the aggressive displays of living hippos. The animal's diet was broad, with toothwear patterns indicative of hard and abrasive food being consumed fairly regularly. Fossil evidence suggests that in North America they may sometimes have hunted the early camel Pobrotherium. Bite marks on the cervical vertebrae of these camels, they were attacked by running alongside their prey, snapping at their necks. The remains of these animals have been found together in large groups, implying Archaeotherium brought its kills to caches for later consumption. Meanwhile, during the late Eocene and early Oligocene, the genus Entelodon itself was widespread in Europe. Fossil remains have been uncovered in France, Spain, Germany and the Caucasus region, with a single tooth belonging to the species Entelodon dirus found in Inner Mongolia. It was larger than Archaeotherium, standing 1.3 metres or 4 feet 5 inches tall, being comparable to a grizzly bear in size and weight. Like all Entelodonts, the genus was an adaptable omnivore that was capable of consuming almost any foodstuffs available, whether that be fruit, carrion or live prey depending on the situation. At the Oligocene-Miocene boundary, the massive genus Paraentelodon dwelt across Asia, with fossil material described from sites in Georgia, Kazakhstan, Pakistan and China. One of the largest of all entelodonts, the animal possessed robust teeth, with the molars in particular being sturdy and adapted for crushing. It lived alongside the enormous rhino Paraceratherium, various anthracotheres and the large predator Hyenodon in an open savanna ecosystem. Parentelodon was the last member of the group to be present in Eurasia, although the genus may have given rise to the later and very similar Deodon of North America. This was the largest and youngest entelodont, inhabiting the western regions of the continent with many specimens recovered from the agate fossil beds of Nebraska. A long-lived genus, Deodon was extant from the late Oligocene to the Middle Miocene between 29 and 15 million years ago. It was approximately the size of an American bison, with large males standing well over six feet tall at the shoulder and weighing about a ton. Its skull was huge, being supported by a mass of muscles anchored to the shoulders and thoracic vertebrae. The limbs were slender and elongated, suggesting that the animal was adapted for a more open ecosystem than its earlier relatives. Like all entelodonts, Deodon was a devoted omnivore. The extent of its carnivorous habits have been debated, but toothwear patterns suggest they specialise in crushing bone and ripping meat, and bite marks on calicothere bones suggest they either hunted or scavenged these large herbivores. In a condition unusual for artiodactyls, Deodon possessed binocular vision, another indication of potential carnivorous habits. By the Middle Miocene, North American ecosystems were transitioning away from forest and scrubland towards more open grassland and prairies. These environmental changes were clearly detrimental to Deodon, which, despite its adaptations for living in open country, became extinct about 15 million years ago. With that, the entelodonts finally perished. In more recent times, Pigs, bears and hyenas occupy niches once held by these animals, although no modern mammal can truly be compared to these formidable extinct artiodactyls. Entelodonts, rather than being seen as hell pigs, might better be envisioned as terrestrial hippo relatives with more athletic builds and predatory intentions than their rotund cousins. With their passing, in combination with the decline of the hyenodonts, carnivorans would then cement themselves as the dominant land predators a situation that persists into the present. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the saber-toothed cat Homotherium. See you again soon. Cheerio.